Okay, and in this video is going to be just the opposite as my, of my other one. Uh, in this case, our host operating system is actually going to be Windows 10, and our guest is going to be Linux. Uh, the other video is just the opposite. Of course, as in the other, get acquire a version of VMware or open a virtual box. We're going to create a new virtual machine. Typical install is going to be fine for us in this case. We don't require any advanced options. I'm going to use an ISO file. That's just a little bit easier. Uh, so many things connected to a computer. After a while, it becomes a little unwieldy, but we're going to go with the 64-bit version of uh, Linux Mint. Of course, Linux. Uh, this all looks okay to me. I know it's a 3x kernel. I can't get much more specific than that, but it is 64 bit. Might want to go ahead and just get that out of the way. It did tell us we would have to uh, specify. And in the interest of ease of use, Linux Mint, uh, now as far as virtual machines go, I would generally leave that alone, but this is an SSD drive, it's getting a little bit on the full side. I don't like it, but right now can't do a whole lot to uh, replace it, so generally like to use that and 8 gigabytes will be fine for the operating system ah, let's go ahead and give her 10 and uh, we're not going to be moving this I'm not anyway store the virtual disk on a single file uh, just taking a look at what we've got. Memory, we're going to have to change. I generally, like I said in the other video, 2 gigabytes uh, for most modern operating systems will be fine. I think this will be okay. You have to pay attention to small details like that. The hard disk I can live with. The memory was much too small. Now I've got about six gigabytes of memory so giving up two I can deal with. We'll finish and it goes right into the uh, actual installation. We're gonna power it on. VMware starts up. That's great. And we don't need that right at the moment either. It seems to have a little bit of trouble with Linux. The Windows install was fairly flawless. And we're getting our splash screen here. Of course, you can run this version of Linux live off of a disk, USB, CD, DVD, whatever. Uh, the size, I think they can... I think there are CD versions available. Generally, you're going to go with a nice flash drive or a DVD as far as making this video a little bit easier to deal with there will be times I pause it okay that's terrific what I want to do is, in this case, we can just install straight from Linux. Uh, generally speaking, you get a menu option at the beginning. Not in our case. But that's okay, because it can be done from within Linux. And we'll just, uh, well, and, and it goes right to the installation. We're going to want English. 
Okay, everything looks good here. That's fine. Uh, in our case, since we're installing on a virtual machine, we're going to choose to erase the entire disk and install Linux because that's what we've designed it for to install Linux. Now, there are other, you know, something else. You can create your, create your own partitions. Of course, Linux generally needs a swap partition and then the root file system partition. Uh, swapping is done on a different partition. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. It will do all the work for us. And what are computers here for if not to do the work for us? Ah, this is fine, and of course it already the ext4, that's the file system for Linux, and the swap, of course, we know is the swap, so let's continue this. And it will do its installation. For now, I'm fine with whatever time zone it wants to put me in. Uh, I do indeed speak standard United States American English and we're just gonna I like that and just in the interest of moving things along I am gonna use kind of a weak password but all this is protected by the host operating system and I have a rather lengthy strong password for it continuing along most of the rest of this installation is going to be uh, extracting and installing files and that's it and of course since we've already booted into Linux it's a live CD meaning we can run it live off of the CD or DVD or flash drive you can uh, play around with Linux and see what there is to do. You're going to definitely take a performance hit. You're installing an operating system that's running on a virtual disk inside a virtual machine on top of Windows, but years ago when I first started this computer hobby that's turning into more of a way of life uh, I wouldn't have even thought this was possible it's, it's amazing coming from DOS to these days yeah, it's truly amazing of course they want to show you some of the neat stuff you can do inside Linux at this point I'll just let it go and when we come back it'll be installed as a note, uh, it's, it's worth saying that if you don't want to download and install, like if you have a slow connection, I do, uh, generally speaking, but if you have a slower connection or you don't want to install all these language packs for some reason, just, just make sure you're not connected to the internet. Uh, that's usually the best option, just kill the connection disconnect it before you start the installation and uh, that will save you a bit of time as you can see I've had this going for about 44 minutes uh, and that can be a bit unnerving after a while again we'll come back when more is happening right now we're just uh, well a little bit of post installation going on
Uh, the last recording kicked me at the 10 minute mark. Just wanted to uh, get the last little bit of this installation. It's configuring hardware now. And uh, with these installations, most of it's pretty hands off, uh, straightforward, does quite a bit of the work on its own. And as usual, you have a few questions. Uh, it's installing Grub. An interesting fact about Grub it's a nice. Uh, bootloader type bootstrap program you start it up uh, if you have a multi-boot system like I do uh, Linux plays very nicely with other operating systems and uh, while it's installing grub on this virtual machine it won't actually use it uh, but if you're in a virtual or if you're in a multi-boot environment it will give you options to boot into your other installed operating systems. I generally tell people to install Windows and then Linux because Windows just tends to overwrite those uh, start files for other operating systems. As you can see we are finished. We will restart the machine now. Let's see. And we're going to remove the installation media. There we go. All right, let's just see what happens here. And it is indeed going to restart for us. Just make sure we can get in. So far, so good. <coughs> Excuse me. It appears to be starting all right. Ah, and we are indeed using the installation on the virtual hard disk because if we were in our uh, uh, live disk it would just log in uh, no personalization whatsoever in this case we're going to use the weak password I created earlier because it's not a real issue in our case oops hey and you can see that it was password let's just clear that off What we want is our login name first, and our password is password this time, just because we're not looking to uh, have any encryption, any kind of security of any real note on this particular virtual machine. And you can tell it's it's not quite as snappy as maybe um, multi-boot system type setup. Not quite as quick, but it is indeed acceptable for our purposes. I just want to see desktop. Hold on a second while we wait for that. And it wasn't long at all. Uh, yeah, we, we understand. Uh, that's the first window to pop up. But yeah, there is. Uh, there's our desktop. And of course, one of the first things to do there is fix that background because that's important stuff. Linux, you get a lot of choices here. Like a nice. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I apologize for two videos. I didn't think I'd get cut off at the 10 minute mark. I hope you enjoy.